I thought we were the protectors of truth. Democrats, Republicans, you all lie. We, a small band of survivors, are on our way to the Steel City to find the resistance. Join us. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance with Senior Airman Ward Miller and the ironclad voice of Pittsburgh Hutch Jr. laying down verbal C4 to blow away the lies and the political tomfoolery. Your papers have been cleared. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Steel City Resistance. My name is Hutch Jr., and I am located in Brookline, a neighborhood in the city of Pittsburgh, and I'm deep, deep down in the bunker. Welcome to Steel City Resistance. And I'm Ward Miller, also in the city of Pittsburgh. I'm here in Mission Control, and, you know, we say it every week, and this week we really mean it. we got a ton of stuff to talk about and uh, lots of opinions, and so we, we're going to have to, you know, be in gear today. Because <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to take notes today because I'll tell you what, uh, what a week, Ward, what a week. This week is uh, historic in nature, I'm going to say. I, I really am. I think uh, – what occurred in Wisconsin and what occurred in San Jose and San Diego, uh, really, when uh, historians look back on this week, this is the end of the domination of the public sector union in politics, I believe. Yeah, I think that they're going to take a big hit. You know, I've I seen a sign that says, from Wisconsin, I can see November. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's what it is. I, I think that, that people around this country are starting to wake up and realize, you know, we don't have the money. You know, and you can't have these public sector jobs, you know, where where trash collectors are making seventy five, eighty thousand dollars a year, and you know, and on top of that, the 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 gross amount of unemployment that we have, and and you know, people that have just have given up looking, you know, the, you know, they're they're trying to spin all these numbers, and and I had a story I was going to put in, I don't think I did, where they were looking at some of the. Uh, the green jobs. I think I sent you a link on it, but the 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 way that they were categorizing green jobs was just is just ridiculous. So that's so that the president can say, yeah, well, we've created all these green jobs and the stuff like a uh, uh, what was it? I remember a, seeing a the story. Man. There was normal, yeah, garbage man and all kind of different yeah. professions. Yeah, garbage man's a green job because they that they deal with recycling. Yeah. And the, I mean, hell, they even had the uh, the the oil lobbyists. You know, the big bad oil <laughs> lobbyists. The whole are thing now is the, green jobs. They're using the same dialogue that they've been using and successfully uh, for years. That anybody that has any inkling of wanting to reform any of this or make this sane, it's insane right now. But you automatically want people's houses to burn down and want to, you know, not have any cops. And they want to make it like anybody who's uh, advancing the argument is anti-police, anti-firemen. And they're doing, they did it today. I was watching them on Fox News Sunday. Oh, yeah. And, and it's not going to work this time. I mean, when the average American looks at the television and sees Richard Trumka, they see a mobster. Yeah, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I, I think that you know the police department, the firemen, uh, they're they're freaking heroes, and they are. You know, they they deserve every every penny they make. But I, I've said you it know, before; but, they're but being the, lied the, to. Yeah, they're being lied to, and we're being lied to because you know there's no way that they say, well, we're going to have to fire half the police department because we can't afford this, because you know the the federal government's taking our money away. First off, the the local police, well, even the state police, are paid for by the state. That's why, hence the name. So whatever the federal government has to do with it has absolutely nothing to do with whether or not you're going to have police in your neighborhood. And the funniest it, part about it, if you look at the federal, because I a lot of union employees work for me, and when you look at the federal <laughs> union situation jimmy carter fixed it if you made all the other unions the same way the federal unions are there would be no more problems federal union members cannot collectively bargain for their wages and benefits they are set in stone you know they change there's cost of living increases and things like that but federal federal pensions are 401ks these well, if, you if you remember the uh now this is back in the 80s when the air traffic controllers went on strike <laughs> and, and Ronald Reagan he gave him an, he gave him the nuclear option yeah. he goes look you got a week to get back to work if you don't go back to work by the end of that week you don't have a job anymore right 
And, and, uh, and that's what you have to do. You can't, you know, while I understand that these people feel as though that they're, they're being downtrodden and, and you know, that the, the man is taking advantage of them and, you know, whatever kind of nonsense you want to inject there. The bottom line is, you know, when you're in, when you're a air traffic controller and you're managing the air travel through the entire United States, you can't have somebody in there going, well, we're going to just, you know, we're going to go on strike and we're going to shut down the entire country. You know, and, and there's some of them hardcore union guys who think that Ronald Reagan was the worst president oh, ever because, because he stepped on, you know, collective bargaining and whatnot. The, there's a line between collective bargaining and stupidity. That's why most police forces can't go on strike, you know, because, you know, it, the cops go on strike. It's just martial law. Everybody's just going to go berserk. The and, problem, and do the problem with the public, the public sector union problems to me is it's a money laundering scheme, pure and simple. If you have a Democrat administration in any local or state government and they're negotiating – with union employees, then you have the unions negotiating with the people that they paid to get elected, negotiating with the people that they need to, to, to up their benefits so they'll pay them to get elected again. It's a never-ending circle, and the person, the people that are screwed in the whole thing is the other half of the country, Well, the conservatives. It, well, it, it, for those out there that, that aren't hutching me, that you know weren't, may not have been following the what happened in Wisconsin real closely. Basically, what happened is when Scott Walker, one of his things was, you can belong to a union. He didn't outlaw unions. He didn't outlaw collective bargaining. What he said was the unions can't take your dues out of your paycheck. And I've got some startling statistics re regarding that coming up in the show. I mean, it's and, just amazing. And, and but that's what happened. Yeah. So. All these union people are going, you know what? I don't want to pay this guy. <laughs> so so union dues dropped dramatically. And, you know, of course the union says that's Scott Walker's fault. Yeah, it's really not. He just gave them the option of, hey, you don't have to pay it. it there's nothing that says that I have to allow anybody to come in and take money off of you. So... I mean, before it was automatic. It was required yeah. for the state to do oh, yeah. it. And these people were held hostage. I mean, in Wisconsin, the branch of the AFSCME, the American Federation of State County Municipal Employees, saw its membership decline by more than half from 62,818 in March of 11 to 28,745 in February. That is stunning, and that is the end of public sector union power, I'm telling you. That's in, New, that's in Wisconsin, where public sector unions originated in 1956. Well, I, and I think the part of that, too, is you're going to see a, a backlash from that to, to states oh, absolutely. You know, around the country that are going to go, hey, you know what, they, uh, they did this, this and, and, it, and it worked. Why, why can't we do it here? Why can't we do You know, so, and, and I'll guarantee you that Chris Christie's slobbering all over himself. I wish uh, the to, mayor here was. That. I wish Corbett was. Now, I, said, I started off the show saying this was a historical week, an historic week. I read a story that uh, a gentleman characterized where we are right now as the fourth gener or the fourth revolution. And he cited the first, you know, after the American Revolution. He cited the first one as when Thomas Jefferson and the Democrats took power from the Federalists, uh, when the Federalists were saying that they knew everything and they knew what was best for everybody, and Jefferson and the Democrats took over. And then second, when the Republicans and Lincoln took over to end slavery, uh, was the, the second revolution. The third was when, uh, and, and these things all had uh, influence on the country until the next revolution. Uh, after the uh, Lincoln and the Republicans took over. The next revolution was when FDR took over and gave us what we have today. This is all this this is all from FDR, Woodrow Wilson and FDR. And the man said that we are poised to have a fourth revolution right now and we're going to write this country back and I agree with him. I do. There's a different feeling in the land. I mean these these forces that have been uh frustrating us for so many years, Ward, the cracks are starting up here finally. Yeah, it's about time. It is. I mean, when you see uh, 
some of these things that are going on. I mean, look at Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton emerges, and he comes out here, and the first thing he says is, I'm the one that gave you four balanced budgets. And I'm thinking, all right, what's he doing? Something, something in right here. You know, and he comes out, and he says, Romney's got a great, a sterling business record. And all these things, and I'm going, wow. <laughs> they shouldn't have pulled that race card a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah, well, he, you know, I, I think that, and I don't understand why, and, and you know, I know that uh, Clinton really doesn't like o Obama oh, that no. much. And so, you know, he, the thing is, Obama has to stand Bill Clinton up next to him because. Who else? Yeah. Think Bill, about because, it. Because. Who, yeah, you're they exactly put, right. Who else are you going to put next? They're going to put Jimmy Weinstein Carter? up there. You're going to put Pelosi. Who else are you going to put up there? These yeah, so he are. has to put Bill up there. And Bill goes, "Hey, you know what? Bank Capital has a you know when he was with Bank Capital, he has a sterling record." <laughs> and Bill Clinton doesn't do anything by accident, man. No, 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 no. <laughs> it, it's all very well, very planned. Out. And then on top of that, he comes out and says, "And I think that we should extend the Bush tax cuts." Oh. And then he comes and, out the next day and like makes a, a weak attempt at walking it back, and it's like, nah, you did. You it. can't walk. He knew exactly. And he what had you were no saying. intention of walking. No, you haven't seen Biden around anymore ever since the gay marriage thing. Biden's been MIA. The, I I think they got him tied up in some. Yeah. You know, he's in the basement of the White he's House. He's in a dumpster Duncan. somewhere. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what else is getting bad. The media. It's just every week they come up with they, they dig themselves deeper and deeper. I'm watching ABC. This week, I, I wasn't watching. I was watching an excerpt from one of the aggregators. But they've got Ann Coulter on there and Huckabee representing the right. And they have uh, Ed Rendell. And Van Jones. And I saw Van that. Jones. They have a communist, a self-avowed communist, anti-cop guy from Oakland that is sitting there saying how much he loves police officers. Now, this guy's a communist, straight straight up. You know, Abram? Yeah, he's a self-admitted communist. Yeah, Valerie Jarrett brought him from Oakland. He's, he's horrible. And he's on, a, he's on a news show sitting next to two governors. Uh, I thinking, watched that and I, I, you know, the, the stuff he was saying had me laughing because he comes out and his argument was, well, the, the, uh, the whole Obama health care bill was bipartisan <laughs> and that the, 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 the individual mandate was a concession that the president made to the Republicans so that the Republicans would vote for it. Oh, that's and, I'm, and, and I'm sitting there, and as I'm listening to it, I'm like, somebody's got to jump on the fact that not a Republican voted for this. Yeah. Ann Coulter did pretty well. She fought back well. Uh, I'll tell you what. she, I like Ann. I do, too. I, and usually when she gets on there, especially when she gets on with, with some dimwit like Van Jones, she makes him look just so stupid. And, and Rendell's a fighter, man. Rendell's a bully. You know Rendell. I mean, he, oh, Rendell's definitely a bully, but he, he's he's your atypical yeah uh, Democrat where he's gonna he's gonna just try and outshout you. He knocked and, Obama for the bank capital thing too. Yeah, for I mean, the calling but, calling uh, Romney a vampire or Dracula or something like that. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Anybody that that lives in in the Pittsburgh area, or, uh, it may be all Pennsylvania. I don't know. They're running this commercial with this uh, older lady, and, and I don't know if you've seen it. And this old lady's talking about, I was two years away from retirement, and they fired me, and, <laughs> and, and it was all because of Bain Capital, Bain Capital and, and Mitt Romney, and, and Mitt Romney made me sick. That's her quote, oh, yeah. right? The problem is, when she was fired, Mitt Romney at that point was no longer with Bain Capital. I think it's like that with every commercial they've run so far. I mean, they're, they're all factually broke or the person that's up there whining is the ex-union president that ran the company into the ground to start with yeah uh, I, I mean, mean bank capital goes in and goes okay well we'll give you know i mean it's it's basically like uh what's that called like angel investors they'll say okay well we'll give you this much money to, to get yourself up and running and da, da 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 and if you don't we're gonna have to you know we want our money back yeah and, i mean but, Tr trumka was and, on one show and then so they sent his chief of staff or something this female to a another show i was watching her on fox news sunday and she she made some statements i tweeted them on t she made some statements she said uh governor walker didn't inherit a budget problem when he came into office and i'm thinking that's why he got elected you know she said uh, public sector employees are not overpaid well, was that debbie wasserman no, that, that sounds like the idiocy that she no that's something she would say this is someone i never saw before an oriental lady 
that's like uh, vice president or something like that. But it was just ridiculous. And they had the head of the teachers union on there, and they're making all these pitches for uh, about holding, you know, uh, quality workers and da 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 da. da. You know, in the United States, one of the easiest degrees to get is in teaching. You know, you go to some of the other countries, and they're the hardest degree to get. You yeah. Know, but it's uh, it's turned into an industry. But, you know, and here's the thing. I, I, here's the problem I have. I have people in my family that are teachers. And, and they they wanted to be teachers because they wanted to help kids. I totally get that. You know, and, and in fact, my brother is a teacher, um, and he's not in the union because he didn't know somebody and couldn't get into the public school system. So he teaches at a private school. He makes about a third of the money that a, a public school teacher makes. But he's not doing it for, you know, he didn't expect to go into that right. profession and make a million dollars. He expected to go in and, and make a difference in some kid's life. And that's what they're trying to do. And I, I believe in my heart that there's good teachers out there. Oh, there, there is. There absolutely that, is. That, that that's what they want to do is they want to make these kids' lives better. But then I seen right before the show last week, uh, I sent you, I think I sent you a link. There was a Marine who was at a Walker protest and he, all he had, he had a sign that said, you know, you know, go for it, Scott he or something arrested, like that. Yeah. It, it wasn't nothing uh, derogatory or insightful, you Not, know, nothing trying like to the left would care. Yeah. And the, 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 this one lady was a teacher and she's just yelling at him, you know, how, how dare you come out? You know, he, he's trying to take food off of our table. And my only thought is, if they're able to take food off your table because you suck as a teacher, you suck as a teacher. Well, that's the thing. You have to look at the statistics. You know, this, if, if, the United States, if United States school children were number one in the world, even in the top three in the world in any of these subjects, we wouldn't be having this conversation. We're not even in the top five. No, and, and it's the system. The money goes to the freaking system. I mean, just in our city alone, ladies and gentlemen, they have closed so many historic school buildings in this city to be able to afford to pay for our workforce that it's horrible. I mean, these kids are getting packed into schools that used to have, there used to be five high schools, and now they all go to Brashear. You know, it's ridiculous, man. Well, here's the other problem you have. They closed Shenley it's, High School. A place looked like almost like a museum. Well, the, the, here's the problem, Hutch. The, the Department of Education was started by Jimmy Carter. Instead of your tax dollars going directly to the city of Pittsburgh or to whatever your local municipality is, instead of your tax dollars going there and they get 100% of that money, the money has to go from you to the federal government, to the Department of Education, then the Department of Education gets their cut, and then they send what's left over to the schools. And then the schools, you know, and then that school uh, district or whatever has to divvy that out amongst how many schools there are. But if you look at the, if you look at the budget, for, for every year in this town, you hear about more school closings. It seems like it. Almost every year, there's another round of buildings that they're going to close because we are losing population. That is true. Well, but, you have a combination but, of losing losing population, but, but the budget, you have school teachers that are making eighty and ninety thousand dollars. And the a budget year. never goes down. I researched it last year. Last year, yeah. when they made the latest cut, I went back and I said, you know what? Let me see what's going on here. And every year for the past five years, they made more than they, the budget was bigger than it was in the year before. And what's that tell you? It's going to the people, man. People are robbing it. Well, it goes back to there was that story that everybody went, oh my God, what's going on? Penn State, which is a state school, gets money from, from uh, the state of Pennsylvania, state school. So what happens is every year the state gives them money. And at the last check, they said that the state had just given them $3 million. That's $3 million. Right after they got the check from, from Ed Rendell or from – Corbett, whoever the, whoever signs the, the the check, they increased the tuition, <laughs> okay, and they hired more people. Sure. Right. So here's the deal: they broke it down that between the teachers and the faculty and the staff, for every three students there is one faculty member. Yeah. 
and, and, and they can't understand why why the money's out of control. And then once they get tenure, well, they, they, get they go from they, they go from making thirty forty thousand dollars a year to making eighty ninety thousand dollars a year, and then they got tenure and you can't fire them. And they work nine months a year. I mean, um, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very important uh, time, an important election. Uh, you need to be prepared with knowledge on what we were up against. And I posted a video. You're going to have to look for it because by the time this show airs, it will be number one on the website. Uh, but look for Cultural Marxism. It's an hour and 39-minute film that will uh, explain where we are, how we got here, who got us here. And it'll just explain a lot of things, and it'll help you to understand some of the rhetoric and some of the... Uh, you know, knowledge that the uh, things that are going around, the different uh, phrases people use and the different ideas that don't seem like they're quite right. Go on there and, uh, and watch that. It's very good. It explains a lot of things. You know, maybe that's something we got to do. Maybe we, we need to come up with some kind of a cheat sheet. It, you know, uh, Eric, who is one of our, you know, followers uh, and, and protagonists and, Whatever you want to uh, – Eric's a great guy, and we do appreciate him and his contributions to the show. Maybe somebody like Eric could sit down and write a cheat sheet of what the Democrats say the word is and what it means. And incidentally, in that film, Ron Paul plays a big part in that film. Uh, he, he's got some very, uh, very outstanding knowledge and, and points that he makes, uh, and they really get it down to the bone to where uh, – I've And I've said before, Hutch – and, and I want to clarify this. I've never said that Ron Paul did not know domestic policy. Right. No, I agree definitely. with his domestic policy more than I agree with pretty much anybody else. The foreign policy is what scares the hell out of me. Yep. And, and, I, and, and I, that's my disclaimer that I make every time I talk about Dr. Paul. I, I do think that, that from a domestic standpoint, as far as taxes, as far as getting rid of the Fed, as far as, you know, 99% of his domestic policies, I agree with almost 100%. I'd like to see Romney pick Rand Paul as his vice president. I could work with that. I don't, yeah, think, I don't think he will. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much going to guarantee you that it's going to be uh, Marco Rubio. I don't know, man. They keep putting these, these people that are like moderate types, the Portmans and the Mitch Daniels and the Jeb Bushes. Mitch, and the Mitch Daniels already said he ain't going to do it, and, and Jeb Bush will never do it. Because the thing is, Romney can't pick Jeb Bush because it, the name recognition. Oh, I wouldn't. Uh, well, that's, the, I mean, the Bushes ought to be banned from politics for the rest of my lifetime. I don't ever want to hear about another Bush. I'm done with the Bushes. That's just me. I mean, it, it's, it's but, too, it's too easy to fight against them. And, and that's the point. You can't, you know, as soon as he would name Jeb Bush, do oh. I think that he would do a fine job? Yeah. I mean, he was, he was the governor of Florida, he did a hell of a job. That's not the point. He's too the liberal is, for me. He, but the, my point is he's got the name. He's as bad as Christie, though. Yeah, I, I think he's a rhino, too. Yeah, we need somebody strong this time because there, whoever, if you look back and I'm eating I meet, I would, I would pay my i'd give a year's salary if you'd pick alan west so would i yeah alan west would be terrific he can fight too you're not beating him uh no i would love but if you look I, at I, I, I would, my, my entire salary to watch him debate <laughs> joe, joe biden here's here's the, the the place where we are though that that uh you know we've had this opportunity before ronald reagan gave us this opportunity before and what did we get we got george hw bush and he wrecked it you know it's just uh I don't want to do that again. You got. We're going to get the opportunity in 2012, and whoever gets elected is has got a. It's going to be hard work, but if you just butter the bread on one side and that's it, and you know you don't really roll your sleeves up and mo, you, what you have to do is you whoever gets elected has to mobilize the country. You can't just well, do it from Washington. You have to get people that they're ready to go to work and lay out the the stakes in front of them and lay out. What the what what not doing it really means? What a dollar being worth a dime means? Well, I, I agree with you. Uh, the the number one thing you have to do is you you gotta you gotta use the SCR uh, methodology, and and you gotta call a pig a pig. You Absolutely. Can't, you can't do this 
politically correct, let's be nice and all sing kumbaya, because that ain't going to fucking work. It hasn't worked yet, and it's not going to start. I think I said this before, but in case I didn't, I'm going to do it again. Here's, here's how you can tell where the United States is economically. Back when a $20 gold piece was worth $20, you could buy a really good suit with that $20 gold piece. With an ounce of gold today, you can buy a really good suit. The only difference is it's $2,000 now, and it used to be 20. It takes $2,000 to equal what was 20 when we were on the gold standard. It's the same suit. The only thing that's different is the amount of dollars it takes to get it. There it is, right there. We got to get it to where the dollar's stronger than yeah. it is now. It's 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 getting worse every time. Uh, uh, every time the price of gold goes up, that means your dollar's weaker. I, I totally agree with you, Hutch. It's not I, saying a damn I, I thing about it, the gold. It's saying about the dollar, not the gold. The gold stays the same. No, we got to get it to where a dollar's a dollar. Yeah. You know, and we got to quit borrowing money from China, and I mean, th there's a ton of stuff. That, I mean. Like you said, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, and the the first thing you have to do is quit kowtowing to to the unions. You got to quit kowtowing. You know, when when you're the president of the United States and the union says, "Well, we'll go on strike," all right, fine, you go on strike. I'll mobilize the military. They'll take over your jobs, <laughs> and you're done. Have a good day. Yeah. And that's what has to happen. You got to get somebody in there with a set of stones that says, "Look, I don't care how." I don't give a shit how things used to be done. There's a new sheriff in town. This is the way it's going to be. And I hope that Romney has the balls for it because that's what we need. We don't need speeches. We don't need teleprompters. We don't need catchphrases. We don't need none of that shit. We need somebody in there to go, this is the way it has to be and move on it. And, and, and not just be rhetoric because then nobody starts, you know, nobody will believe a damn thing. You said, as in, a hope and change. Hope and change didn't work. Oops. You know, any anybody that voted for that Nimrod realizes now, hopefully realizes now, that none of that worked and it never will work. Well, Wisconsin had a, a had a governor's recall they'd like to forget, and I already told you about the uh, asked me, but they were not alone. Six thousand of the American Federation of Teachers, of seventeen thousand members quit as well. So that's uh, that's huge, man. I mean, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars union leaders have spent on political campaigns are overwhelmingly amassed for mandatory dues collections, dues that can no longer be taken for granted in Wisconsin with more states likely to follow. A de facto union monopoly was broken in Wisconsin as well. WEA Trust, which was their health insurance company, was nailing them. And uh, they went away too. They have to be competitive now too. So uh, this, this whole situation in Wisconsin uh, they're lying about it on the left, and the union members are. But this is something that just, uh, it scared me. I thought maybe this guy's going to get taken out, you know, but uh, the polling was all bogus and everything. They were they were using bogus polls. CNN was saying that it was 50-50 on exit polling, and it ended up being, what, about 60-30 or something like that? It was a landslide. Yeah, it was. It he got was more hilarious. votes than he got when he got elected. Yeah. And, uh, I, 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 and I think a lot of that, too, I mean, it's it's very similar to, the old, uh, uh, what was it, the Reagan Democrats, yeah. where these Democrats, you know, realized, hey, this guy's for real. I mean, he, he's coming in here. He's saying what he's going to do. He does what he says, and it's making my life better. And that's so, the thing. Yeah, he had I'm going to vote for it, it. It was great because he had just enough time for the economic indicators to start, uh, you know, showing that what he was talking was true. And, and that's, that's all you need to do, ladies and gentlemen. Romney doesn't need to play any games. All he has to do is tell the truth. Yeah, you know, I mean, that works every line, time. He, the thing is, uh, he hasn't been the governor of Massachusetts in years. The, they're trying to point back at that. They're trying, Christ, they're trying to bring up stuff that happened when he was in high school 50 years ago. I mean, they're grasping at straws. They don't have anything concrete, and they have no answer to him saying, "What about the jobs?" Yeah. You know, I mean, they, they, they could they could throw all the all the mud at them they want talking about bank capital and all you got to say is why are we at 8.9 percent unemployment? I mean, and you don't see a whole lot of people blowing trumpets for them or anything. They're they're putting other people's names out there. Well, that, that and the fact that you know they came out and they. He needs to disassociate himself with Donald Trump because and Donald he, Trump's a birther and and the birthers are asking. Didn't for he himself, handle that you know? well? He just didn't. He just dissed him. He just gave him the palm, man. Go well, away. What do you? 
to be honest with you, that what he should have done is said, you know what, maybe I will as soon as the president disavows himself from Bill Ayers yeah. and, and, and Reverend Wright and Van Jones oh. and, and Bill Maher. And, you know, if, if it's the fact that Trump's giving money to him, great. Bill Maher's giving money to him. Yeah. And Bill Maher is far more of a disgusting human being well, dig into the, than, than Trump ever thought you, about being. Dig Trump's, into the back Trump's with, sleazy. Dig, dig into the backgrounds of some of these union leaders of Trumpka. You know, oh, dig yeah. into his, they're, they're all, you know, he, anyway, Pelosi's spouting off about 2016 already. Yeah. Nancy Pelosi who touched off a new wave of Hillary Clinton for president buzz two months ago by taking the secretary of state as the 2016 candidate keeps it up in an interview in the Chronicle with Carla Marciani. Uh, Pelosi is upbeat about the prospects for a female president in her lifetime, namely her friend, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Why wouldn't she run? She's magnificent Secretary of State, Pelosi said when asked about Clinton's prospect in 2016. She's our shot. That year, uh, she's our shot. That year, Pelosi said. Uh, you should read the whole interview, which includes Pelosi's thoughts on the need to keep selling health care reform and her winning is everything view of the House in 2012. Hillary was a magnificent Secretary of State. She gave us the caliphate. Yeah, you know? <laughs> she, she's done a phenomenal oh, job. Oh, she has. She's been great. And, and the thing is, she she's so already good. come out and said that she doesn't want to run. She has no intention to run. And I think that that's why Bill's just basically screwing Obama in the ass. Because oh. he's like, well, he you know what, Hillary's race not running. I'm not going to need him for any kind of political cover. Screw I you, I mean, Cl Clinton, Clinton's the first black president, and he pulled the freaking race card on him. I mean, that's still got a sting. <laughs> you know, I think that's what that is, you know. But uh, something that, well, I that think, I think Bill's actually blacker than than Obama. He plays a hell of a saxophone, that's for sure. If that was true, you know, when he played at that time. No, he did. He was a saxophone player. But uh, one of the things that's going on here that I really don't understand. One of the things you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, is that everything that happens in Obama's entire life, at some point in the near future, it's all going to come out. It always does. Everything is going to come out, and the media refusing to cover this story uh, has really got me wondering, do they think that they're immune? Uh, when they're found to have not reported on something of this magnitude, how many people are going to rely on them from news, for news? I mean, on the evening of January 11th, 1996, while Mitt Romney was in the final years of his run as the head of Bain Capital, Barack Obama formally joined the new party, which was deeply hostile to the mainstream of the Democratic Party and even to American capitalism. <laughs> In 2008, candidate Obama deceived the American public about his potentially damaging tie to this third party. The issue remains as fresh as today's headlines, as Romney argues that Obama is trying to move the United States toward European-style social democracy, which was precisely the new party's goal. Uh, minutes of the meeting on January 11, 1996, of the new party's Chicago chapter read as follows. Barack Obama, candidate for state senate in the 13th legislative district, gave a statement to the membership and answered questions. He signed the new party candidate contract and requested an endorsement from the new party. He also joined the new party. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The, the job that the mainstream media refuses to do is done by uh, the new media. And it's, it astounds me that so many people in the United States would vote for somebody like, you know what, I'm not even going to say that. I'm going to wait until November because I don't know how many people are going to vote for this guy this time around. Well, I don't think, you know, when you consider that, that he was the Messiah and the chosen one and, and whatever else you want to call him, you know, the media didn't vet him. They, they put him out there and said, he is Teflon. Nothing sticks to him because he is perfect. He's perfect in every way. And, you know, and the bottom line is, all right, now it's starting to come out. He hung out with a, a known terrorist. He's a communist through and through, man. You know, Reverend Wright is, he's not a communist. He's just an America hater. You know, uh, the, the people that he surrounds himself with, you know, Van Jones. Valerie Jarrett. You never hear Valerie anything Jarrett. about her. She's the biggest slumlord in Chicago. Yeah. I mean, Tony you know, Resco. Resco. He, Resco's yeah. a mob guy. He's an outfit guy sitting in a federal penitentiary. It was it was Obama's main guy. I, and I'm sure that on Obama's last day, Resco gets a pardon. 
probably will. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that. Now you came. But you up know with what? Some... Go ahead. The, I find that there's five insane ways that Obama is spending your money. All right. In mid-April, the uh, General Services Administration was caught planning a lavish uh, Vegas vacation slash conference to the tune of eight hundred twenty-three thousand dollars. Jesus. Was that necessary? With over $100,000 spent on pre-planning meetings, 30000 in pre-conference catering, $79,511 in light refreshments and breakfast, and $75,000 in team-building exercises to build bicycles, it would be blasphemy to call any of these things a necessary cost. Can you imagine 30000 in pre-conference catering. That's just the people that went out there to set the chairs and shit up. Yeah. I wonder what they ate. Uh, I don't know. You know what 70, I mean? 79 grand, he got to eat pretty good. But I'm just uh, saying a 3000 for the pre-conference, just for the five guys that went out there. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. Hutch, the very next week in April, Judicial Watch, a watchdog group, uh, performed an analysis of the documents obtained from the government groups that to find that Michelle Obama's Spanish vacation in 2010 cost almost $470,000. The cost of the vacation broken down per U.S. taxpayer is not a crazy expense, but the fact that she does this in the face of millions of unemployed and underemployed Americans during a recession does not set a good example. I think that's going to be one of the main things that hurts the campaign. I mean, I think that there's a lot of blue-collar Democrats that are going – you know what? That was wrong. You know, I can't even go to Somerset. Yeah. Also in April, clearly a bad month for the administration, it became apparent that Leon Panetta, Secretary of Defense, was often flying back home to California at the cost of about $3,000 per hour for a total of over $800,000 just since July. He must, uh, he must fly on government planes for security reasons, but can't he live in Washington to serve his country for a year or two? Uh, number four, no one knows exactly the cost of Obama's campaigning on the taxpayer dollars, but the Republican National Committee went as far as to file a formal complaint about the amount of campaigning he was doing even before he started, camp his, before he started his official campaign. With over 104 fundraisers held before March 6, 2012, Obama certainly racked up the cost. By the way, of the 104 fundraisers uh, are more than the five previous presidents combined. Uh, and last but not least, number five, Obama pays a barber to fly to Washington to cut his hair. As much as I want this to be a joke, it's not. Once again, the actual costs associated with the preceding events are not that much to the individual taxpayer, but the fact that the President of the United States would do this in the face of Americans does not set a good example. Don't let your administration spend money wildly. Don't let your wife go on insane vacations. Don't let your cabinet members spend bazillions of dollars on flights and use your own campaign money to campaign and get your hair cut in Washington. Yeah, it's not like there's a shortage of, of barbers that cut black people's hair. I mean, Washington, D.C. is one of the biggest minority cities in the country. You know, he, has it, to... he flies in back and forth from, from Chicago every week. That's ridiculous. Now, this next story, story ladies and gentlemen, changed a little bit. Uh, the individual that I'm going to talk about, uh, Bill Pascrell, actually was elected. And there was a, uh, a fierce uh, competition between the Obama administration and Bill Clinton once again. Bill Clinton... Uh, back this guy that won that I'm getting ready to describe some disturbing traits. Uh, troubling Islamist associations for New Jersey Democrat. Because of redistricting, redistricting Representative Bill Pascrell, Demo Democrat New Jersey, is running for re-election today against fellow Democrat incumbent Congressman Pascrell's slogan, 100% New Jersey fighter. Given his troubling associations with Muslim figures who have espoused fiery anti-Israel rhetoric and turned a blind eye to Hamas sympathizers, though it's hard to tell against whom he's actually fighting. Take, for example, one of Pascrell's closest allies for at least a decade, Mohammed El-Filali, 
who was an executive with a local mosque whose founding imam is in jail on terrorism charges and whose current imam is fighting deportation on terror-related grounds. El Falali leads what could, be, what could seem like a strange existence, leading grotesque rallies by day and then cozying up at night with congressmen, or at least one congressman in particular, Bill Pascrell. In April 2002, for example, El Falali led hundreds of followers at an event in cheers equating the Jewish state with the Nazis. According to the New York Times, El Falali, El Falali was the MC at the rally when he led the chant of Sharon, Hitler are the same. Only difference is the name. They like to chant. That night, he was at an Arab American fundraiser attended by over 250 people for Representative Bill Pascrell. El Filali has donated thousands of dollars to Pascrell over the years, including $1,500 in the past year alone. Uh, Pascrelli has been a staunch opponent of the deportation of ICPC Imam Mohammed Katani, Katanani, whom the federal government is attempting to deport for failing to disclose his arrest and subsequent conviction in Israel for supporting Hamas. And Pascrelli's voice carries great weight in this arena as he is a powerful veteran member. It's pretty outrageous that Pascrell would come to the defense of Katanani, a convicted supporter of Hamas, especially because there was information made available to him as a member of Congress about the imam's role in supporting the killing of Jews, said Stephen Emerson, founder of the investment project, investigative project on terrorism. He should release details about whatever briefings he received. And one final uh, little jewel here, Pascrell appears to be actively targeting the Arab and Muslim community. Last week, bringing out the first elected Muslim congressman, Representative Keith Ellison, Democrat, Minnesota. I can't stand that man. Who has become one of the most vocal critics of Israel in Congress. Since being elected to Congress, Ellison came even more famous in 2007 for appearing to suggest that 9-11 was an inside job, saying that he wouldn't call the attack a U.S. plan because, you know, that's how they put you in the, in the nut bail ball, in the nutball box, dismiss you. Last week was not the first time Pascrelli bought, brought Ellison to his district. Less than a year after Ellison compared 9-11 to the Reichstag fire, Pascrell arranged for the Muslim congressman to speak to an audience of 300 at ICPC. According to a March 2008 Herald News account of the event, Imam Mohammed Katanani, who was already fighting deportation on terror-related charges, praised Ellison, remarking, you are an example for us. Now, I, I personally, I, I think this is despicable. Uh, I think it needs to end, and the, the, sooner, the sooner that we identify the enemy, as Colonel West said, the sooner we can quit chasing our, you know, chasing our tail. This is just, yeah. it's ridiculous. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and it's one of them things where, the, because the media is not bringing it out, the no. Joe normal person that gets, all, you know, the, the other problem is a lot of the older people that would actually take umbrage with this, most of them aren't computer illiterate or are computer illiterate. They, they don't understand how to use a computer. So the entire new media model is wasted on them. So they rely on either A, the newspapers, or B, the evening news. In either case, you get what you get. I, know, I think they're, they're going to lie to you. You know, like folks like, you know, my dad, who is not computer literate at all. He can only go by what they have on the news, you know, and, and I can bring them stories and show them, you know, look, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. But, you know, especially around here in Allegheny County, you know, we're the second oldest county next to Dade County, Florida. So it's harder for us to get this word out to the, the people that would actually have a problem with it. You know, yeah. uh, the the older guys, you know, the World War II guys, the you know, those people, they wouldn't be taking this garbage. Now, I think there's an excellent opportunity for an entrepreneur to start new media. I think uh, one of the things that's going to happen with this fourth revolution is I think that the uh, Jurassic media is going to be torn down. I really do. They're bleeding money. I, I mean, they are. Yeah. The only one that's not bleeding money is Fox. You know? Yeah, well, and, and print media is dead. I mean, you look at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, which is the liberal paper of, of record in Pittsburgh, uh, is losing 
subscribers as the Tribune Review is gaining them. I mean, it's it's just a fact. Uh, now, it says something that it took 44 minutes for us to get to it, Ward, but there's another story about Eric Holder's arrogant ass, and uh, it just never ends. Yeah, more information emerges regarding Eric Holder's role in Fast and Furious investigation. Congressman Daryl Issa uh, released a report Tuesday that alleges senior officials in the Obama administration uh, lied during a congressional investigation while testifying about their initial accounts of what happened during Operation Fast and Furious. The information was recovered from wiretaps uh, obtained that had been used by the Obama administration during the uh, operation. In a June 5th letter to Eric Holder, Issa alleges the wiretap wire applications show immense detail about questionable investigative tactics was available to senior officials who reviewed and authorized them. Six wiretaps were initially approved for the purpose of allowing federal agents to monitor phone conversations of individuals suspected of ties to the Mexican cartel groups. These wiretaps provided evidence that senior officials were well aware that the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, ATF agents, had sold guns that were illegally smuggled into Mexico. The U.S. Attorney General has reportedly denied withholding any information regarding this operation. During Operation Fast and Furious, a series of controversial actions were taken by the ATF that involved the sales of thousands of guns from individuals with ties to Mexican drug cartels. The goal of the operation was to track the purchases of the guns with the hope that the U.S. agents would eventually obtain information regarding senior officials involved in the drug cartels. However, to date, less than 700 of the 2,000 firearms that were illegally sold have been recovered, and the firearms have been linked to the death of a U.S. Border Patrol agent. Have you ever now, gotten the opportunity to watch Eric Holder in any of these hearings? Yeah, I watched him this week. He never answers a question. No, and what gets me is the entire questioning that he faces is extremely bipartisan. Yeah. When 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 he's being questioned by a Republican, the Republicans focused like a laser on Fast and Furious. What about Fast and Furious? What about these wiretaps? What about, you know, and, and everything pertains to Fast and Furious. When a Democrat questions them, well, they turn it into a circus. Well, yeah, it was like, well, there's an antitrust suit that should be in Mississippi because we were told that if these two airplane companies merged, that the price of air flights would go down. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? They turned it into a circus. They're interrupting people and everything else. It's oh, just yeah. The Democrats have lost their moral fiber. They have. And I've known that for years, but I mean, it's starting. If, if they ever had it. it it's start, and, and the other thing that's good is that the Republican Party is starting to starting to pair off some of these people of ours that have lost theirs too. I mean, there, there's yeah, there's some of them out there too, especially at the oh, state, absolutely. especially at the state and local level. But if you look back, uh, one of the glaring things that uh, I remembered it the other night was when Trent Lott was asked about the Tea Party in the early stages when they were starting to get strong, and he said, "Oh yeah, we need to co-op them." And I'm thinking this guy used to be like a. I used to think he was good. Yep. You know, I used to think this guy was a you know a really good uh, guy, but nah, not anymore. President Obama was not scheduled and did not, to my knowledge, attend any commemoration for D-Day. We just passed our D-Day uh, anniversary, where a whole lot of the Americans and everybody else died, and uh, it was probably the turning point for the world. Uh, concerning, you know, geopolitical uh, strengths today. Uh, and he didn't even go, man. He went to a New York City fundraiser and went to Philadelphia. and Then he went to California. He's out in San Francisco shaking hands and kissing babies with, with damn movie stars. And never at any point during that day did he mention the, the hundreds, well, the thousands of, of brave uh U.S. soldiers and British that, and Canadian, and British and, and yeah, everybody that was involved in a D-Day yeah. invasion that, that basically freed Europe, and he never never bothered to mention. But he that. never hung out with Bill Ayers, and Bill Ayers never never shaped any of his worldview or anything like that. Anti-U.S. military Bill Ayers, you know. Yeah. Unbelievable, man. But I guess that happened. So, uh, hmm. CBS was. Uh, 
kind of getting a little loose with their tongue, it looks like, Ward. Yeah, last night, Los, Los Angeles, uh, as our economy burned, President Barack Obama continued along his record-setting uh, fundraising pace uh, of events, not cash raised, but events, uh, with a stop in the glittery top 1% of the LG. Uh, that's just getting longer and longer. That's that's yeah. like that's like the Lesbian, ATF. <laughs> gay, bisexual, Tra trans, trans testicle. Yeah, whatever. Tra Fundraisers that included Ellen DeGeneres, Cher, Chaz Bono, <laughs> and CBS Corse, uh, CBS Corp's uh, CEO and chairman Les Moonves. 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 Les. Sure. Why not? Uh, part of what Munevs does is oversee the CBS News division, which, uh, ma which makes the fact that he attended a political fundraiser fascinating, but not as fascinating as what he told the Los Angeles Times. CBS chief Les Munevs and his wife, Julie Chen, waited patiently for their wristbands. Uh, Obama, Munevs said, has shown great leadership on the issues of gay marriage. Though he heads a news division, Moon have said, ultimately, journalism has changed. Partisanship is very much part of journalism now. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> he, he hastened to add that despite his presence, I run a news division. I've given no money to any candidate. Yeah. How'd he get in the uh, door? Yeah, especially an Obama thing. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you, you don't walk in the door and say, no. hey, I'm just here for the free food. Hey, you look on uh, our fa you look on our Facebook page, and I posted a picture up there. Fox News did a poll of journalists and asked who they wanted for president. And over fifty eight percent of them want Obama. It's only like I forget what the numbers are, but it's on our Facebook page. Go check it out. Oh yeah, I mean the that's the thing. The, the lamestream media is all hot for them because they they think that that. You know, the country just makes so much money that we can afford that nobody needs to work. Oh, yeah, that's what those union guys were saying on Fox News Sunday. That He got that lady, and she said it, raise taxes. We need more teachers. Raise taxes, more taxes, more money, more money, more money, more money. It's sickening. Yeah, but raise taxes, but you can't. Get, nobody can get a job. I know. It's ridiculous. And, and it's the policies of this administration that are preventing people from getting a job. And the ones you know, they do create, the ones that I'm so sick of hearing the words creating jobs. That just, you don't create a job. You got to create wealth. And then people make a profit. And then there's a potential for them to add more employees. But you don't, a company's not there to create a job. A company's there well, to make a profit. Well, the thing is, the federal government cannot create jobs. Well, they do, but they're public sector jobs. And that's but, the ones they're counting. Yeah, and they're counting them, but they're, they're not it's, real jobs. They're not creating wealth. That's what you got to create, wealth. The whole creating jobs mantra is they can add as many new police or whatever that they want to people at the Department of Agriculture, but that's making the economy worse because we're having to pay more to fund them. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, but the finally, the liberal media is finally looking into the birth certificate issue. Of Mitt <laughs> Romney, that is. <laughs> Reuters... Uh, extensively investigated the presumptive of Republican nominee's background and concluded that he was born on U.S. soil and qualifies as a natural-born citizen. Romney's past, his record at Bain Capital, his tenure as Massachusetts governor, and his Mormon faith and the church he attended, his views on race as a younger man, his marriage to Anne, his treatment of the family dog, and even the alleged bullying incident as a high school student that was nearly 50 years ago. In 2009, the government of Kenya announced that it was planning to build a monument to Mr. Obama. Instead of addressing the issues immediately and forthrightly, the Obama administration spent millions of dollars in courts to prevent his birth certificate from being unsealed. At the very least, he is a charlatan who for years has helped to perpetrate a massive lie about his background. They no longer hold leaders of both parties accountable rather they act and view them and view themselves as communications arm of the democratic party romney ties romney's ties to his church and what he said to fellow parishioners and what they thought of him obama was a lifelong loyal democrat that the charges that he associated with marxist militants and hardcore leftists were simply vicious conservative smears 
They allege that he is always and has been a pragmatic and moderate liberal in the new fair deal tradition. Obama was a member of the new party, a far left third party devoted to imposing secular socialism on America. That's in a nutshell. That's something. And I mean, they, they do it and it's, it's just, uh, again, I'll say thank God for the internet because I think it's going to end. I don't see how I really don't see how you have a business plan like this and it lasts. You know, for years, people trusted the media. You know, I mean, we've talked about, I don't, in retrospect, I don't think he was that good now. But Walter Cronkite, you didn't tell him, you couldn't tell until the end. You know, yeah. what this guy was thinking, you know. I mean, it was still there, the bias, but it, not like it is today. Today, no, they, they might today as well be blatant. DNC. Yeah, they might as well be DNC now. I mean, uh, I'm totally shocked that Van you know, Jones on ABC News, Van Jones was sitting at the table. The guy's a communist, and he was sitting at the table like a credible correspondent. Well, what, what I don't understand is, you know, when, when Katie Kirk was doing it, how, how come she just didn't wear the fucking Obama pen? Yeah. You know, I mean, they're, they're so deep in, in bed with the Democrats. It, and some know, of them and, are worse than that. O'Donnell's a self-proclaimed socialist. Larry O'Donnell. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a self-proclaimed. He said it. I heard him say it. I played it on the show. Maybe not this show, but it was some show. I, I have a clip of it somewhere. Yeah, it's it, it's a shame that it takes a couple of you know, a couple of, uh, of tenacious guys from Pittsburgh to with sit with other say, jobs and lives, with other jobs and lives to to go and and find this information and give it to you people just so you can understand. The media's lying to you, folks. It's it, horrible. It, there's there's no other way. There's no other way we can we can say it. The longer it's you, not that they're it's not that they're trying to deceive you. They are deceiving you. They're yeah. lying to you through their teeth, and you're expected to accept that and move on. And I would definitely again suggest, if you have an hour and a half or you have to do it in increments, go to the website and watch the cultural Marxism. It, it, cultural Marxism equals political correctness. And this is a this is a plan. It's called the long ride, and we're reaching the end of the long ride. And what we do in November is going to be dramatic in the outcome of our nation. I mean, it really is. Well, you know what, Hutch? I, I meant to bring this up because I, I, in fact, I did it today. We we had talked about it on a show. It was either the last show or the one before it, where I got the all the uh, the uh, correspondence numbers of oh, the congressman. Number. For Congressman, I sent Governor uh, Corbett a, a, an email today that said, hey, you need to stand up a, against this Sharia crap. You know, the, that is, that's how they're overrun in France. Oh, absolutely. You know, We've Obama wants to point to, to Europe all the time about how their socialized medicine works so well and how, you know, all the socialism stuff's touchy-feely, happy, blah, blah, blah. The bottom line is, you look at how well France is doing. France, you know, just how, just voted in a bigger socialist oh than they God. already had. And, and what and they now, do, they reduce the working, the retirement age to fifty, I think. Yeah, and, and on top of that, you got all these Muslims there, the 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 folks of the religion of peace, that that are just you know grabbing you know white folk. Or, or, you know, non-Muslims that are walking down the street and they're mobbing them and just beating the hell out of them. Yeah, and Christians of their own racial makeup. I mean, Egyptian Christians. It's, it's. Uh, and I apologize. I forgot the, the jihad report. This, geez, I, I was running a little late. I just realized I forgot it just now when you said that. Uh, but we'll have it next week. That's something I like doing. I just, I just forgot about it. It was a busy weekend. Hey, you know, with, with all the stories we had, and, and we got them all in, we, did. we have two minutes it's left. Like, it's like nine stories, but uh, with a with a 25-minute preamble. <laughs> but uh, ladies and We're gentlemen, really damn good. get over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash steelcityresistance. Uh, we're hovering right at 49 members. We need to get some more in there. Uh, there's some good hey, stuff on there. We've been really posting to it a lot. And, and that's the thing. If, if you are a follower of Steel City Resistance, we want to thank you. Absolutely. Uh, we want you to share the the Steel City Resistance with your friends, with your your the the people you work with. Share with, with us. You can, you can post on the timeline. Share with us. You know, it's your, yeah, it's your it, forum. 
if even if your friends are are super uber liberal left lefty you know nutbags share it with them maybe maybe hutch and i will get something in and, and make them think that's and, our goal and if they're it's civil our, we'll, we'll interact with them if they're civil we have rules you know we're not yeah. we're not getting stupid here uh yeah. but yeah i'll gladly talk to any liberal I, I do it all the time and when you're trying to Talk to your congressmen and, and representatives and whatever uh, level of government. Don't underestimate the power of Twitter. No. Don't do it. I, I, I you know, sent some th tweets to Governor Corbett, too. That's exactly what it's going to take for us to, to advance this new media. It's not just Facebook. It's not just Twitter. It's not just, you know, Hutch and I on Ustream or on, you know, Blip or who, wh wherever you wherever you find us you know it, it's not just Breitbart it's not just you know it's a collective mm -hmm. and you, we got to build use, a collective we use that word very sparingly <laughs> yeah but we, we got to build the collective and get everybody you know on the same page and you know Try and remove, try and erase the lies that the mainstream media. Yeah, it's to that guy. point. It is to that point. I mean, there has to be. I I totally agree uh, with the fourth revolution concept, and I'm not saying necessarily an armed revolution. Uh, I can't rule that out, though. You know, I, if the dollar, if the bottom drops out of the dollar, and people are going to the ATM machine and no money's coming out, I'll tell you what, man, we got problems, and you better be ready in your own family. <laughs> but that being said, I think there's a major sea shift coming. Uh, for that to happen in Wisconsin the way it did, Wisconsin might as well be Moscow. You know, yeah. Ma Madison, Wisconsin might as well be Moscow. I mean, that's all I've been there. That's all there is to it. The place is as left as you get. And uh, the people in Wisconsin, the good people, uh, finally said, uh, enough, is, enough is enough. We're not doing this. And that's huge. That's giant. The, the labor unions and the Democrat Party were 100% all in in that one. That's all they oh. have. That's all they've got is what they threw at Wisconsin. And you saw it for months. They've been invading the, the uh, Capitol and everything else, and it did not work. And that's just saying volumes. Oh, yeah. It really Absolutely. is. Send us an email, steelcityresistance at gmail.com. Like I said, check us out on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter, SCRPGH. That's getting a little bit of a slow start, but I imagine that'll, that'll change. And... Uh, if you don't have anything else, Ward, that looks like it's uh, going to wrap it up. Thank you for letting us uh, into your life for an hour. No, sorry. I'm over and out.